Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Big Dang Guys Views. Alright, so really quick. Um, in the last video I talked about, um, I said that I uh, recently watched all six of the Star Wars movies with David. He was over here for a little bit and um, he watched them all in a day and a half. So, um, I decided since uh, he wasn't here uh, not too long ago, I had the movies fresh enough in my mind that I might as well do some reviews, especially with episode 7 coming up. And so, uh, this is the second movie in the Star Wars movies, and I'm doing them all from episode 1 through 6 because <sighs> I saved my dessert for last. So, with that uh, comes the bad news. Here we're at the veggies. Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Okay, I, I, I'm just going to get all my ranting out for for the first few minutes. What the fuck was with Hayden Christensen? He was a whiny teenager in this whole movie, and they had, oh, the love interest just creepy with him. I mean, what? What the fuck? That's basically what he did! That's basically it, and just what the hell? What? What? Why? Why? About the only redeeming quality about this was that it showed older characters. And that it showed Jar Jar Binks fucking up the Republic and the clones. That's it! Sorry. I had to get that rant out. Alright, so. Basically, good and bad. First movie, we see Anakin Skywalker as a little boy. Now we see him as a tall guy that's whiny, that's probably even younger than the original guy at heart. I mean, Hayden Christensen was just whining the whole damn time. He said, it's not fair. He was like a pouty baby. Quite frankly, I want... <laughs> Quite frankly, he is the Jar Jar Binks of this movie. Jar Jar Binks, as you know, he was in uh, episode one and two and three, and only in episode one to, and me, in episode one, he had a couple redeeming characteristics. But, damn. Hayden Christensen, how he plays Anakin Skywalker in this movie, I think is probably one of the worst performances I've seen in a long time. Just, why do you keep whining like that, boy? What, what the fuck? You're supposed to be the epitome evil in a few years. Now we know what's really under that mask, and quite frankly, it makes me laugh. <clears throat> and the love interest between him and Padme, oh my god. I'm a very big Star Wars fan. I love the series to death. I mean, if you haven't been able to tell because of how adamant I am, I mean, look, this... I'm a, I'm, I got a freaking Rancor right behind me. I'm a fan! <laughs> So, for for me, it the, just what 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 the hell? Um. <laughs> however, redeeming qualities: the clones and Jango Fett in that whole end fight, fucking amazing. I love Jango Fett, and I know that people aren't really a, that big of fans of. Boba Fett's a little clone, aka his son. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I, I, I love it. I'm like, okay, let's go with this origin story. About damn time, let's go. Now we get a basis between them. Remember, all the prequel trilogies are just to see how everything is all set up, and in this one, just, I'm sorry, just the baby face, it, his attitude, just it, it's killing the moment. Um. <laughs> So, good things. Like I said, the Jango Fett stuff. I really love it. I think that when uh, we first are introduced to Jango, I think that he's just a total badass. I think that Boba's a little bit more, but origin. Um, and, I mean, the end fight to the movie, when the clones finally come in, just blows me away. I love the grand scope of everything. Now we finally see a war going on. We see all these other troopers fighting against each other and it's just explosions. The CGI is great in this. I love I, I love the whole scene. And then 
that fight between Anakin, uh, Obi Wan, and Dar um, uh, Count Dooku. Sorry, it's been a long day. Just, oh my God, mind blown. And then the end fight between Dooku and Yoda. Oh my fucking God, this is amazing. I love it. Um, so <laughs> I'm a fan. No, no more. I don't care if I have 50 Hayden Christensen baby voices and one Count Dooku versus Yoda match. It's amazing. I love it. Um, <laughs> so, but then again, another issue that I had with this was the politics. I think that the politics were just a bore. I hated how much they did. However, it did give us one great scene where we see what exactly happened to the Republic and how the Empire was born. Well, not officially, but figuratively. And Jar Jar Binks was at the center of it. And Jar Jar Binks was the one... <laughs> so for those of you who haven't seen the movie, and quite frankly, if you haven't seen it, you and you're a little kid, tell your parents that they are failing and that they need to show you these movies because they're fucking amazing. Um... <laughs> Frankly, I think that, so, so in uh, this movie, if you haven't seen it, Padme, she's being targeted by no one knows, but for the sake of this and spoilers, Count Dooku and the Separatists are trying to target her and kill her, which is why we're introduced to, hey, Jango Fett and Boba, um, so, yeah, basically, <laughs> she's being targeted, and things are going back and forth, back and forth. Oh my god, I'm going to die. And so she has to go to Naboo. And there, she and Anakin, who's her protector, they have this really big freaking uh, scene. Just, oh my god. Either kiss the damn girl, or get rid of that face, because quite frankly, it's creeping me the hell out. If I ever, <laughs> well, I, I am a little, um, if you haven't been able to tell, uh, <laughs> but seriously though, he looks like a stalker. Anyway, pardon me. When she's away, she leaves Jar Jar Binks of all people. And this is the person that ate apples with his tongue and stepped in Bantha shit first moments on Tatooine, got in a bar fight with Saboba, was kicked out of his own species and clan because of how dumb he is, and <laughs> she leaves him, of all people, in charge of the Republic, or in charge of her Senate seat when she's gone and being targeted. Quite frankly, I do have elected the shit, but Again, Star Wars, we gotta figure this out. So she is gone, and Jar Jar is thinking, okay, what, what can I do in, in her place? And uh, they're suggesting, vote emergency powers to the Chancellor! And then he finally brought it out, saying, like, I suggest that we... I'm not gonna do that voice. <laughs> I suggest that we vote immediate emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor, and hi, Darth Sidious over here, incognito, and that's how the Clone Wars happened, that's how Order 66 happened, and that's how the Empire was born. So basically, Jar Jar is the father. Um, God damn, what the hell? Um, just, I get it, if you think into it. Like I said, Jar Jar Banks, he is a screw up. I mean, complete and utter screw up. I mean, personally, I would have voted for the shit in an election. But, Jar Jar, being the character he is, he's left in charge of a sentency, which that alone is huge responsibility. And then on top of that, <laughs> he doesn't know what to do with it. He's a screw up, and the one time where he screwed up and did something right bringing people to this other person, he became a general. And an army for a species that he got kicked out of because of how clumsy he is. And all of a sudden he has the same thing. 
oh my god, maybe this is a second opportunity. Maybe I can be just as good as the last time. If I do this, they'll sure to love me. Well, he does it. And he's a middleman. Uh, pardon me. Sorry. So, if you look at it from that perspective, you see Jar Jar Binks as a victim. And for me, personally, I, I love that. And this is kind of a theory. And only if you're really looking to it. So, sorry, I don't mean to be doing all that. But quite frankly, that's what I view it as. And this is my reviews expressed to you guys. So, Jar Jar Binks not only kills it on accident. And it's not even his fault. He just is born that way. He can't help it. Which, at the same time, is part of the reason why I gave episode one a three stars out of five. Because, even though Jar Jar is such a clumsy character, when you get into episode two, which is also a really shitty movie, for the most part, it has some great stuff at the end, but really shitty throughout, you see a victim, if you really look at it, other than just him expressing lines. And to me, I, if you really look at it, I think that he is one of the most important characters. And quite frankly, I start to like him even more. He becomes... Not less annoying. Well, he is and less. But... Quite frankly, he's an innocent victim. And he can't help it. So, a little food for thought there from, <laughs> from a nerd. Um, but at the same time... Hayden Christensen, who played Anakin, I think did a horrid job in this film. I think that that's what kills it. I think that the whole love interest between the two is just dull and boring. And quite frankly, if if I were Padme, I would have pepper sprayed the bitch. But then again, they get together at the end, and then la di da the raid, and um, and scream. You know how in the last one I had a lot of issues with the CGI, like a lot of other fans? I think that some of the CGI was kind of dull in the first film. I think in this one, the grand scope of the CGI that they have in it, I think it's brilliant. I really love how they how they pulled it off. I think that the CGI, like the end battle between the clones and the droids, it's just mind-blowing. I love it. I think that... Excuse me. Sorry. My throat's really hurting. Um, kind of dry. I'm losing my voice. Uh, sorry about that. But, um... Yeah, I think that... Sorry, weird people outside if you can't hear. Um, overall, I think that this one is the weakest out of them all. I think that the aspects that they have portrayed in this film are really dull. I think that the acting is horrid, especially by Hayden Christensen. But, at the same time, the dialogue itself was duller than a nail. It's duller than a, a nail head. It was really poorly written. That's for everyone. So, at the same time, time Hayden Christensen, he didn't have a lot to work with. But... Still, it was... Overall, I think that it's a good movie. I think that... Well, it's a decent movie. It's not rotten. I think that other people, because of... Because the first Star Wars movie, it bombed. A lot of people didn't like it. The reason is because it had been years after Episode Six came out, and then all of a sudden, Episode One comes out, and Jar Jar Binks happened. So objectifying them and just hating them because they're so... It wasn't at the right moment. And then episode 2 comes out and the same thing happens. Really drawn out. Love story, poorly written script, just horrid. However, if you look at it, not from that perspective, but look at a new light saying, Okay, this is a fresh movie. Let's see the patterns. Then you see, oh... That's what they're trying to do. Ignoring all the other bullshit. So, 
it's kind of hard to call this one because I think that it could have been a decent movie, but it wasn't in the end. Um, well, it was a decent movie. It was far from the best, and it had some it had some really great aspects, but not many. Not enough for it to be a five or four. Um, so here's why I've why I've always gone by for the ranking. Zero or zero is obviously a movie that I never want to watch again. One is really really terrible, but somewhat of a watch value. Two decent. Yeah. Someone plays it, I'll watch it again. Three, this is kind of good. Maybe not all the time, but really good. Four, oh, that song, that song, I really want to watch it. Five, oh my god, I want to watch it over and over and over. Oh my god, I can't get enough of this. And so, I have to get this a two. I have to get it two out of five stars and I'm really sorry to do that but as a fan and just as a basic movie goer I have to give it that but oh, as a movie goer and a reviewer I have to give it two stars but as a fan eh, two and a half um not quite a three but two and a half because it's a little bit better than just oh my god what why is this so I, I have to go for the higher one. I have to give it two and a half because it's not why am I watching this, but it's not it's not good, but it's not horrid. That's what I'm saying. So I have to go in the middle, two and a half stars, definitively two and a half. That's it for Star Wars Episode Two, Attack of the Clones. Um so anyway, thank you guys very, very much for watching. Um Please go to my channel, please like and subscribe to this video and watch my other ones. Um, a little bit of changes have happened with this video. I'm a lot more adamant than I used to be. <laughs> um, new tripod, yay! Um, so also, around the same time that this and the first video will be uploaded, there are two other ones that are going to be uploaded at the same time. Once I are uploaded but haven't published, like, released to you yet, but at the same time as they're releasing this and the first one, they'll be out. So, please look out for that, and those are Smosh the Movie ideas and expectations for the movie, which I will review in the next few weeks. So, please uh, also pay attention for the third film, uh, the last movie in the trilogy of the prequels, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. And until then, I hope you all enjoy, and take care. Bye.